Hi, we're Sean and Julie from Chicory's Travels. Today we want to talk about the new RV warranty and whether or not it's worth it. So we purchased the new RV for two main reasons. One, we figured it would have less maintenance that needed to be done than a used RV. And second, we figured for the maintenance that did need to be accomplished, if we had a warranty, then it would be easier and more cost effective. The end result after having the RV for a few years is neither of those was the case. And in this video, we'd like to explain to you why we feel that way. So I think the easiest way to go about that is to talk about what maintenance work actually had to be done. So when we first got the RV, picked it up at the dealership, there were two things that we identified that needed to be corrected. One was the stove, only three of the burners worked. No, there was three burners, three burners and two of them worked. So one of them didn't. And then the inverter was not staying on. So neither of these things were kept us from taking delivery of the RV, but what we did is we scheduled a service appointment to come back one month later, and in the meantime, they would order the parts. So when we came back in a month, they hadn't received the stove parts yet, and so they couldn't fix it. And then they supposedly fixed the inverter, but when we left, it was still not working. Um, a little bit about the inverter is we had warranty work done on it three times and each time they said it was fixed and every time after we would pull away we would flip the inverter it would run for about 30 seconds and then it would shut off so I took it upon myself to do some investigating and found out that they had actually installed the inverter upside down and if they read the manual there was a big X with a picture of the way they mounted the inverter that said, do not mount it this way. So we ended up fixing the inverter ourselves. So the moral of that story is the warranty might pay for the warranty work to be accomplished, but it doesn't guarantee a level of service. So you still have to do your due diligence and try to find a good service department to do that. So like Sean said, we left there that time after it had even been, I think, overnight we had to stay. In the service bay. Yeah, in the service bay. They had hookups and they let us stay there overnight. So, I mean, they had it that long. Didn't fix the stove. Didn't properly fix the inverter. So we went back to the campground that we were staying at. And within like a month of having the RV, the air conditioner went out. And this was in Florida in the summertime. So it was pretty important to get that fixed. And we called the service department and they weren't going to be able to get us in for a few weeks. So we called a mobile repair technician. So the mobile repair tech came out. It cost us $50 for him to come make a service call. But then he was able to replace the AC unit just by dealing with Heartland and didn't cost us any more. Uh, money and it was completely replaced within a few days to a week and he was also able to do the same thing with the stove and since we told him about both things at once we only had to pay out of pocket the one fifty dollar service fee after that everything else was billed directly with heartland he didn't charge us again when he came back out um, so it was actually pretty convenient that way and then we also had a problem with our sliding glass door where that opens to our deck um, it was leaking at the base and he was able to get approval to fix that as well this was um, after the stove and the AC unit was repaired this was another call so we had to pay another fifty dollars um, but he came out twice I think he had to come out twice to fix it correctly and um, he did that so then there were a few other things that came up and we had already realized by this point that we were kind of tired of taking it to a service department that didn't always get the job done. Um, also having to be away from our RV and we also um, wanted to save the $50 service fee from the maintenance, mobile maintenance person that came out. And since Sean had finally fixed the inverter on his own, he was feeling a little more comfortable about trying things out. And that's when he actually fixed a few other things. So we had a valve go bad in our toilet 
and it's all one piece so you can't just replace the valve so I ended up replacing the toilet which was actually fairly simple just like replacing a toilet in a house it just took a, an hour or so to replace the toilet I bought it on Amazon and it got shipped to us and it was a uh, porcelain so and it didn't break or anything in shipping and then we had an electrical problem where our all of our electric would just shut off at certain points and so I actually called the Heartland help uh, support line and talked to them and they gave me some ideas so I was able to find where a screw hadn't had come loose that was holding uh, tightening down a wire so every time we would flip the switch on the outlet where that wire was it would uh, short out the system so I was able to um, just screw that wire back in and fix that and then we also had a problem with very low water flow and I was able to troubleshoot that and repair repair it myself as well so one thing that we learned is that if you can do some of your own maintenance like that, then that definitely is actually what's easier and more cost effective. And also we purchased an extended warranty. So our original warranty was for two years. We purchased an extended warranty for three years to take us out to the five years. Now we're at like three and a half years now, but we only use that extended warranty once. Um, we, again, I don't know why we didn't learn our lesson before with the service department, but we were going to be back in the area where we purchased the RV. So we're going to be staying with Sean's parents. So we thought this would be a good time to take it in and let them do this work with the extended warranty. Ended up being in there two weeks, you know, and, and they did fix it, but it was something that we really probably could have, I say we, really he could have uh, done. And, and save the money. So really, I felt like that extended warranty wasn't worth it. What is your research shown? And then, you know, extended warranty companies aren't in the business of losing money. So they know by previous history of your particular RV, what needs to be fixed and what typically breaks in that three year period that you have the extended warranty. So they're gonna pretty much charge that amount plus profit for themselves because they, like I said, they're not in the business to lose money, they're in the business to make money. So if you just have a maintenance budget where you set aside money every month in case stuff breaks and you also keep up with your preventive maintenance tasks, um, you'll, you'll come out ahead monetarily. Um, you may have to use some elbow grease and you know some YouTube searching to figure out how to fix some things, but you'll definitely come out ahead and um, if I knew now what if I knew then what I know now we would not have purchased the extended warranty and getting back to the so there was a dollar amount on that extended warranty yeah. it was like a certain amount that we paid for but it's not as easy to calculate how much you pay for a new RV warranty because that is part of what comes with buying a new RV however we purchased the new RV for about $85,000 and two years later at the time that the the new RV warranty manufacturer's warranty was expiring it was only worth about $60,000 because of depreciation so basically we paid $25,000 for that peace, of, peace mind. of mind that we got and the convenience of having the new RV warranty. So do we think it was worth $25,000? No. Yeah, no, no, we don't. Um, so we have uh, learned a lesson and our personal opinion is when we get ready to, we do want to downsize and in a couple of years get a smaller RV, we are not going to be purchasing new. We'll purchase gently used uh, from someone who's done their preventive maintenance and kept records. And don't just take our word for it, you know, if you're considering buying a new RV for that peace of mind and having that warranty, ask around, talk to some other RVers and get their opinions on it because, you know, we're just one, one couple mm -hmm. who happen to not have a lot of big time maintenance issues with our RV. Um, other people have had several issues and they might think differently about the having the warranty or having the manufacturer's warranty or the extended warranty so definitely do some more research other than what 
Sean and Julie Chickory say. And if you have experience, please put a comment down below because we'd love to hear your experience and learn from that and be able to share it with others as well. So we hope you enjoyed this video. Please click the like button or the dislike button and tell us why you disliked it. Also click subscribe if you haven't yet. And until we hear from you about your warranty experience, safe travels.